In today's day and age where supply chain issues and food security and uh, I'm going to say regulation, etc., are kind of on the cusp of a lot of people's minds and a lot of people are homesteading or growing their own food to try to be more sustainable, to shorten supply chains and uh, just take back some control over their own food production. What you see in front of you right here, this hen with her chicks, is a completely, in my mind, underappreciated aspect of keeping chickens. <coughs> By the hen brooding her own, it's sustainable in that you break some pathways of energy requirement. Yes, you still have to feed them, but if you're raising chickens, you have to feed them anyways. You are essentially taking control of the supply chain because you can still supply all the chickens that you need for yourself. We've been doing it for over a decade, which I think is a very important fact because I feel often that uh, we say it, but people don't stop to appreciate what that actually means. And taking control of your own food production. Buying broilers is great for a put and take scenario, but you are basically just changing the consumer chain that instead of buying it from the supermarket, you're buying it directly from the large entity that maintains those breeds. So you're still a consumer. You're still consuming the product and you're still feeding the system that so many people basically don't want to feed, but yet don't change their production methods to avoid feeding it. But this hen here is doing all of these things for us and asks basically nothing more in return than to be fed, watered, left alone with her chicks and uh, protected from predators. Which if you're raising chickens, you have to do all those things anyways. So as a reminder for anybody who may be new or has not watched too much of our chicken content lately, we raise Partridge Chanticleers. They are a Canadian heritage breed, super well adapted for our climate. Basically, they tolerate any weather. And uh, without going into too much detail about that, one of the reasons that we absolutely love this breed is they are very broody. And in our 14 years of basically keeping this breed, we've, I'm going to say, somewhat selected for the broody quality. Essentially, we don't see it as a bad thing. It's a, a very strong, positive in our minds. And the reason for that, and we've talked about this before, is when we can produce all the chicks we need by using broody hens, that reduces our dependency on electricity, that reduces our dependency on, on incubators and brooders, which obviously is, is electricity, but it also, uh, we tend to find, it grows sort of better adjusted chicks. And Essentially, it's a self-sustaining system. Yes, we still have to feed and house the chickens, which we would have to do whether we were using broody hens or not, but uh, they basically take all the extra work out of it. And we're going to show you a few examples because this year we, uh, again, have hatched everything out that you're about to see under broody hens. These two little chicks have basically been outside free range since the day they were born and uh, as you can see they're doing amazing what are they now five days old six days no uh they're about a week yeah but this is definitely a uh, good example even though she only hatched two that's not actually her fault that's our our error but uh a good example of how uh the right breed of chicken it can really be a lot more self-sufficient. One thing we always find with chickens that uh, are brooded by their by hen, they, uh, they do learn a lot from the hen. And uh, the hens really talk to them, really communicate things to them. So we did a rough calculation here and uh, we're pretty sure we have about 48 chicks that we've hatched out this year. Now that's down considerably from last year, but uh, the 80 some chicks that we hatched out last year I'm not going to say it was too many, but we definitely don't need that many chicks every single year. So 
48 checks is still an excellent, excellent number uh, to start with, and that's from our, uh, our four different lines. So uh, we're in a good position. We already know that we have quite a few hens coming in some of the lines. Uh, we're in a really good position to uh, sort of refresh our flock again, as we always do every fall. Here we have another group of chicks. This hen uh, is sort of confined a bit, but uh, she's got a nice double run. We uh, have lots of space for her. That's a big key when using broody hens to raise babies, is you want to have a lot of space, or as much space as you can allocate them. As you can see here, she's talking to them. She'll come over, she'll probably, uh, well, I guess they all know it. They all know the food's there. Oh, and there they come. It's very interesting dynamics to uh, watch chicks that are raised by, uh, or parent raised chicks. And this group is an interesting group because this is our oldest group from our green line. And this group has essentially been weaned. Something that uh, the hens do, they all do it. They get to a point and they decide you're good and they leave. <laughs> and uh, they leave them to sort of fend for themselves at that point. And uh, the hen that was uh, with this group, she's done that completely on her own. So they've learned basically what they're going to learn from her. And uh, like I say, now they're on their own. That's an interesting piece of raising chickens that uh, are raising chickens under broody hens or with broody hens that uh, people don't always think about. They, uh, I say wean because there really isn't another word for it, but uh, they've graduated from chicken school in her eyes. One thing to think about with using broody hens is, uh, and I'll say it time and time again in this video, there really isn't a lot of other people promoting this. And you don't find a lot of literature on it in uh, most of the modern texts on raising chickens. The promise is usually there of the more industrial method of using incubators and just pumping out babies and brooders and all that sort of stuff. And that all has its time and place. But realistically, using broody hens, that is like the premier old-timey Way of raising chickens because realistically how many literally thousands of years have humans had a relationship with chickens where the chickens raised themselves and just lived alongside us as opposed to us taking control of every aspect of the scenario uh, I'm gonna say it with the um, added economic benefit of being able to quote-unquote produce more chickens albeit potentially in a less sustainable manner. So really this video is kind of a reminder of the fact that this is what we have done, as I say, for 14 years, is raising all of our chickens this way. We don't even own an incubator anymore because we find the birds are way, way more reliable in doing it than we ever are. But I think in kind of winding this video down, uh, you can probably feel my frustration a little bit in the tone of some of the things I've said because nobody's presenting this as a viable option. Nobody. It's, it's hardly ever talked about and very few people practice it, yet in an era where the very things that I've already mentioned, food security, supply chain, uh, are important, this is a very, very simple way to solve those problems and the more people who do this style of chi rearing chickens and uh, I will say as an aside if you live in town where you're not allowed to have roosters or you have a cap on the number of birds you can have you obviously can't do this what I'm really speaking to is anybody who lives in a location where they can have a flock of chickens it it baffles my mind that people don't pursue this Choose a breed that does what they need, or a cross that does what they need, and breed them this way. Because you take out all the middlemen, you have no supply chain issues, aside from feed, which you're going to have. I keep saying it, you're going to have the feed issue if you have chickens, period. That's a whole nother kettle of fish to, uh, to look at, which fish may be part of the solution. But, um, but seriously, we're... we're we're in an era where the more we feed into the larger system, the more we purchase broilers or ready to lay layers or hybrid layers, etc. Those things are all created by larger entities. They're not, uh, they're not created by small farmers, small homesteaders, 
etc. They're they're basically industrial animals and purchasing them is only feeding that system. So keep that in mind as we are getting sort of through the spring, we're almost at the end of the spring of 2022. There's still time to figure this out on your own homestead or in your own chicken raising endeavors for the 2023 season because uh, you have to start somewhere. It's not it's not rocket science, but it, it does have a bit of a learning curve to it because as I said, there's not really anybody else presenting this as a viable option to produce birds to feed a family. So on that note, hopefully you find this interesting. It's uh, kind of food for thought or thought for food or thought for chickens, which are ultimately food <laughs> and produce a lot of very viable uh, and valuable food for us. So uh, think about the lowly chicken a bit more. It, uh, they definitely deserve it and uh, they're within the realm of, of a livestock that a lot of us could actually do in a sustainable manner. So in other words, you're going to save the world with squash and chickens. <laughs>